Welcome to Office 2013 class video number 41. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video or go to our class website. Hey, we're still studying Excel. This is Excel Basics 23, and we're going to talk about the amazing sort and filter feature for basic data analysis. Now let's remind ourselves from earlier in the class, what is data analysis? It's simply when we convert raw data into useful information. In our data age, we're always getting data sets with lots of raw data, and we need to organize it in some way so that it's useful to us. The sort feature, filter, pivot tables are all built-in data analysis features. If we go up and look on the data tab, there's the sort and filter group. Oh, wait a second. Where's that pivot table? As we know from earlier, we've done some pivot tables. It's on the insert tables group. We also know from earlier in the class when we customized our ribbon, since pivot table is the most powerful feature for data analysis, we added our own button to our data tab. Now, in this video, we're going to do sort and filter. Now let's go over to sort D. We have a bunch of great examples for sorting. All right, so sorting, most of the time we're sorting on a proper data set. We talked about what a proper data set is. Field names at the top, records in rows, empty cells all the way around. Now if you've never sorted before, a lot of times people will try to highlight the whole data set or highlight the whole column. That's not the way our data analysis features work. Sort, pivot table, filter, you always have in a proper data set only a single cell selected. Now you can go ahead and highlight the whole data set, but what you don't want to do is highlight just part of it. So that's why I always have the rule click in a single cell. Because remember, if it's a proper data set, field names at the top, records and rows, empty cells all the way around, the data analysis features, sort, filter, pivot table will all get the data set perfect. So here it is. Our first example of sorting. We have assembly times and we want the fastest times at the top. Fastest means smallest. A to Z means smallest to biggest or ascending. So we click in a single cell. Where can we sort? Home ribbon. Editing and sort, I never use this button, but there's some options there. Data ribbon, this is the one I always use. It's got the A to Z, the Z to A, and the sort dialog box. We'll look at all of those. You can also right click, and there's some options for sorting there. I'm going to use my buttons up in the sort and filter. Watch. Now, when I click this, watch, there'll be a flash. Click, and there's a flash. Instantly, it went and found the whole data set and then sorted. Now, I did smallest to biggest A to Z, and there's the fastest time at the top. That's a simple example of taking unorganized data and organizing it in some useful way. Fastest ones at the top. Z to A, here's some sales. Maybe we're interested in the biggest. I'm going to click Z to A, and instantly the biggest ones are at top. Now, here's the exact same numbers, but we have the sales rep name associated with each number. Now notice this is two columns. We'd like to tell the whole data set to sort based on the numbers in this column. So I really want Tyrone and 6,581 at the top, and below it have GG and 5,254. The big fear that people have when they're sorting is they think, oh, it might just sort this column and forget to sort this. No, it never works that way click in a single cell in the column you want to sort, then sort. Now just to prove to ourselves that our records remain intact, meaning I can sort on this column and it sorts all of the records, I have put some yellow right here. Let's go ahead with any cell in the sales column, including the field name, Z to A. Boop. And just like that, that is amazing. Sorting. I got all of the biggest to smallest and all of the names also. So that makes sorting really easy. Single cell, use your buttons. Now sometimes you don't have a proper data set. 
In that case, we want to not use the buttons, but we want to use our sort dialog box. So I'm going to start with a single cell and click the sort dialog box. And what you want to check to make sure is that my data set has headers is unchecked. Because right now, by default, it's going to treat that top cell as a field name. So I'm going to uncheck that. Now there's a few other ways to do this, but when I don't have a field name, I always come here and I look. Is that field name header button checked or not? Now we can simply come over and it's not going to give us a field name. It's going to go by the column. I'm going to say please sort on the values, smallest to largest. I want largest to smallest. And then click OK. And just like that, I have sorted a data set without a field name. All right, now let's go look at another example, sorting by color. So we've marked these. Yellow are the most important, and gray are second most important. Now, before Excel 2007, you couldn't sort by colors. But now I'm going to click in a single cell. And what you'll want to be careful is, we mentioned this before, don't highlight just part of the data set. If you click up here, it will give you this warning. It says, do you want to expand the selection? That's the default setting, because it's assuming that we have field names at the top and proper data set. Or continue with current selection. So the problem with sorting just this is it would wreck the data set. This 3,000 would come on top and then be associated with Mo instead of Phil. Whenever I see this, I just click Cancel. And now I'm going to click in a single cell, go up to the Sort dialog box. And now I'm going to make sure my data has headers. Uh, there we go. Now it's just looking at the data down here. I can come to Sort By, and we can use either column in this case, because yellow's in both. I'm going to select Sales Rep. Not values. I don't want to sort on Joe, Mo, Phil, the actual letters in the cells. I want to do cell color. Oh, that is beautiful. Now we get a little drop down, and it's looking through the column, and it lists all the colors that it sees. Let's do yellow on top. You could do on bottom, too. Click OK. That's beautiful. Now the important records we marked as yellow are at the top. Now what if we want gray below? No problem. We can add another level. Click Sort Dialog Box, Add a Level. Let's do Sales Rep again, Sales Color, and let's do by gray. Click OK. Beautiful. Our record remained intact. Yellow at the top. Now your boss comes in and says, no, no, no. It's the gray ones that are most important. No problem. We go up to the Sort Dialog Box, select it, and we can use our up arrow. If we select it, we can also use our down arrow. So we set gray as on top and then yellow. When I click OK, boom, the records are sorted by color. Now let's go look at some other example. Our next data set, and we're going to use this for four sorting examples. We have date, the track that was raced at, the racer's name, their age, and their time around the track. Well, generally with racing, faster is better. So I'm going to simply click in one cell, and there's our color just as we're learning sorting to see that this will remain intact, and click A to Z the smallest at top. Zane had the fastest. Isaac had the second fastest. Now, a lot of times, we want to sort upon multiple columns. For example, wouldn't it be nice to see the times sorted by racer? So let's go look at our next example. And the key here is something called a major sort. If you're using the buttons, because there's buttons and a dialog box, if you're using the buttons, the major sort will come last. If you're using the sort dialog box, the major sort is on top. Now, what do we mean by major sort? Well, sort times within the racer column. That means all of the racers' names need to be together. Isaac, all of them, and then Logan's, all of them. And then over in the time column, we need multiple sorts. So for Isaac, I need fastest, next, fastest, slowest. And then for Logan, I need it resorted again, fastest, next, fastest, etc. So sort times within racer column, 
times within racer column, the racer column is going to be our major sort. You may also hear it referred to as sort times for each racer, right? Sort the times for each racer. In this case, the racer is the major sort. So let's see how to do this two ways. I'm going to click in the time column and sort this first. Remember, for using the buttons, we keep the major sort for last. So I'm going to come up and go A to Z. Now notice all of these are sorted in perfect order, smallest to biggest. But now with this column sorted, we come over and sort racer, the major sort, A to Z. And instantly, all the Isaacs are together. And look, boop, boop, boop. And then all the Logans are together, smallest, next smallest, slowest. Absolutely amazing. Now let's immediately undo this and see how to do it with the sort dialog box. Control Z undoes this one, Control Z undoes this one. All right, so with a single cell, we come up to the sort dialog box. So I'm going to sort time first, values smallest to largest, then I'm going to add a level. Racer values A to Z. Ah, but this isn't on top, but no problem. I simply boop and move it up the racer. Sort by racer, then by time. Click OK. And instantly we get the same thing. All of Isaac's and all of Logan's, etc. All right, let's go look at our next example. Now, we have our times here, but each one of the racetracks has a different length. So let's see if we can sort times within each racetrack. No problem. Using the buttons, I click in a single cell. A to Z. It looks like they're already sorted, but I'm going to come over here and click A to Z just to make sure. And there we have it. So within PI, Zane has the fastest time. Within CTAC, oh, Zane again. Within Sumner, Logan has the fastest time. All right, and our last example on this data set, how about time within age? So age will be our major sort. If I use the dialog box, I have a single cell selected. I want age, so I'm going to choose that one first. Values, let's do largest age on top. Then we're going to add a level, and this will be by time. Smallest to largest, so our major sort is on top. Click OK. Just like that, we have the fastest 10-year-old is Zane. The fastest 7-year-old is Isaac. All right, let's go look at our last sorting example. Here we want to see how to sort upon three columns. So we want to see sales, the biggest ones on top, for each sales rep within each region. Simply sort, 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 using the buttons in that order. Our region is going to be our major sort. Click in one single cell, biggest on top, Z to A. Sales rep, I'm going to do A to Z, so chin is on top. And then region, the major sort, I'm going to do Z to A because I want to see west. And notice what happens. These are all of the sales for region west, sales rep chin, and his sales are biggest to smallest. So all the way down, you could see the break. Ah, it's still our west because that's the major sort. But now we see Jerry's, and Jerry's are biggest to smallest. We scroll down, and then we see a break in Jerry to John, and his sales are biggest to smallest. Scroll all the way down to the next region. There it is, southeast, and it starts all over again. Chin, biggest to smallest. All right, uh, I'm going to control up arrow. My cursor is right there, control up arrow. Now, sorting, absolutely amazing. Next, we want to look at filter. So I'm going to come over to filter D. And filter is different than sort. It doesn't move all the records and shuffle them. It actually hides rows. So let's first turn on the filter by going to sort and filter, and boom. And filter is simply profound. There's different filters. There's date filters. You're not going to believe this. You can filter and show only last week's sales, last month, next quarter, for text. There's special text filters. Equals, begins with, ends with, contains. 
and number filters, a bunch of special number filters. Now let's first see how to use filter for getting records we're interested in, copying them and pasting to some other location. This is the fast and easy way to extract only certain records from a data set and put them somewhere else. So I'm going to go to region and I want to see not all of them, so I'm going to use my checkbox. I just want to see West. Now, when I click OK, watch what happens over here. Instantly, they turn blue. That means they're filtered. Some rows are hidden. You can see the jump in numbers. Also, you can see the filter icon at the top. Now, if I want to copy and paste, check this out. Control asterisk is the keyboard to highlight the current table. And watch this Control C and the dancing ants are going crazy on only the visible cells. Control C is not copying the hidden row. So when I go over to Filter Paste, click in cell A1 and Control V. Just like that, my boss asked for all the West records. There's all the West records. I'm going to highlight all these columns and double click between one of them. Now let's go back over here. Escape to turn the dancing ants off. I can clear the filter up here. Now let's look at the date filter. It's just amazing. You go up to date filters and I'm going to say last week and instantly I have just the records for last week. Control asterisk, control C and come over here to filter paste. Now I'm going to use my keyboard control down arrow. Then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and control V. We're just pasting this. You know, you put this in a workbook and email it to your boss. These are just last week's sales. That is amazing. Go back to filter date. Amazing. I'm going to click escape to turn the dancing ants off and clear up here. Let's go over to the number column and under number they're greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, between top. 10. You could even do above average or below average. I'm going to say top 10. And look at this. You're not limited to top. You can do top or bottom. I'm going to say the top five items. Click OK. Instantly, I have just the top five. Control C to highlight just the visible cells. Go over to filter paste. Control down arrow, scroll down a bit, and Control V. Now let's go back to Filter D, and we want to see a few more filters. Escape to turn the dancing ants off. Clear. Now we want to talk about doing filters based on multiple criteria or conditions. What if I wanted to find all of Luke's sales in the North last quarter? Just to show you a visual for what this would look like. I'm going to scroll way down. So I'm looking through the column sales rep and finding Luke. Then I have to also look through the region column and find north. And I have to find a date for last quarter. And last quarter was month 9, 8, and 7. The way this works, there's three conditions. You have to get true Luke in the sales rep column, true north in the region column and true the date is for last quarter. True, true, true. This is called AND, A-N-D criteria. So AND, this is true, AND, this is true, AND, this is true. All right, I'm going to control up arrow. It's easy. You don't even have to worry about that it's called AND criteria or anything like that. You simply come and filter one. I want to see only Luke. Two, I want to see only North. And then three, I only want to see from the date filters last quarter. I love this date filters. And just like that, I have all of Luke's north sales for last quarter. Control asterisk, control C. Come over to filter paste. And I'm going to control V. Control down arrow. That's AND criteria. Notice every single record had all three conditions met. Luke, North, last quarter. Let's go back and talk about a different type of filter. Escape to turn the dancing ants off. Clear. What about OR? We simply want to see Luke or Steven. That means it has to look through this column and ask a question of each entry into the sales rep 
column, are you equal to Luke or are you equal to Stephen? It gets a true for any one of those criteria. It's going to show the record. Click OK. So now we can see Luke, Stephen, that's, those are the only sales rep now. Control asterisk, Control C, and then I'm going to paste it over here, Control V. Finally, we've seen and criteria doing multiple criteria, and or that's from the same column, escape, clear. What if we say something like sales, number, top five? Click OK. And then I ask a second condition from the date column. I'm going to say last week. So I come over here and say last week. We get nothing. Anytime you get a zero result, it either means your question was incorrect or there really are no records that match. It tried to look through every single record. It couldn't find a top five value from the sales column that also had a date from last week. So our question was correct, right? We said last week. You can see the check mark and we can see that we had number filter top 10. So we got zero, no problem. It just means there, we didn't have any of our top five sales last week. I'm going to click clear. All right, so that's a lot about filtering and extracting. Now, let's go look at the next sheet filter search. This is an amazing feature. Drop down arrow on this field here, customer, and I can type search. I just want LLP and instantly from the search dialog box, I have just the LLPs and click OK. Look at that. Now I could copy and paste to somewhere else. Now one last filter sort thing we want to look at. We want to go to the table sheet. Now early in the class we talked about the amazing table feature. If we have a proper data set, field names at the top, records and rows, empty cells all the way around, we can convert it to an Excel table. Excel tables have dynamic ranges, but they have a bunch of other cool things also. With a single cell in our data set selected, insert table, or you can use the keyboard control T. It's going to ask my table has headers, you betcha. Click OK. So we know that if we have a formula pointing to the sales column, dynamic range means if I add new records to the bottom, the formulas or charts or even pivot tables pointing towards our Excel table will all update. But let's watch. These drop downs, there's all of our sorting. A to Z, Z to A, by color even. Over here, there's the custom sort to get to the dialog box. And there's our special filters and our check boxes. Now, another amazing thing about the table feature. Since we can filter, and sometimes we apply lots of filters, we want to see a calculation based on those filters. We want a formula like adding that will respect any filter we do and show me the total for only the visible records or the not filtered records. No problem. Here's table tools, design, and in the table style options, total row. And instantly to the bottom we get a total row. If you click in this cell, this is so amazing, you can change the actual calculation. We're going to keep it on sum. And look at this. The column headers ABC have turned to date, customer, and sales. Those are our field names. Control Home, ABC. As soon as you scroll down and you can't see your field names, look at that. That's another amazing feature in the table feature. Scroll down. So we're adding. Now let's add some criteria. I'm going to do that same search. LLP, enter, and instantly I filtered to show only the limited liability partnership customers, and we're seeing the sum. If I wanted to change the function to max or change it to average, you got to be kidding me. Back to sum. So this is much easier than creating sum ifs, count ifs, average ifs. 
Now all those functions have their purpose. They are a great way to build a nice report. But if you're just doing data analysis on a record or a data set and you want to change criteria and see how the calculations change, that is amazing. Now one last thing, what if we wanted to add records? Now I'm going to unfilter this. Clear filter from that little drop down. Boop. Can we add records? You bet. The way you add a record, we have a total row. You click in the last cell on the last record and hit tab. 1 slash 26 slash 11 tab. And this is from last in your hot manufacturers. 1,000 bucks. Now I'm not going to hit tab again. I'm going to hit either enter or control enter. And look at that. Just like that, this totally updates. Now one last thing, anytime we do a table, we want to give it a good name. So up in the designs, I'm going to come up here and call it, I called it sales trans for transaction table and enter. All right, so we saw a lot about filtering and sorting and even some about an Excel table. Next video, we'll talk about pivot tables. All right, see you next video.